Hi friends and Israel fans, come and join me in another episode of Israel with Moshe. So we were talking about the different climates and different landscapes. We mentioned that because of those different landscapes and climates, we can actually grow here pretty much everything you want. More than 550 different types of fruits, vegetables, flowers you can grow in this land due to the variety of landscapes that we have. If we start here in the north, um, in Mount Hermon, in the high area, this is cold most of the year. It even snows there in winter, so we can grow there the agricultural product that acquires cold. We have cherries there, we have apples, we have pears. In fact, half of the cherry supply of Israel comes from the Golan Heights around here. And then we just drive down to the Sea of Galilee and here in this tropical climate with the humidity and heat, we can grow everything that requires tropical um, uh, conditions. We can grow here bananas. Israel is very big on bananas. We export bananas all over the world. We grow here mango, we grow here papaya, we grow here avocado a whole lot of product that requires heat. Come down to the Dead Sea, and in the south part of the Dead Sea, in the desert environment, we grow lots of dates. When you drive there, you'll see lots and lots of date plantations, and the dates are very, very good, especially the brand called Majul, which is a very nice, juicy, soft date. And by the way, when the Bible speaks of the land of milk and honey, the honey that the Bible uses is honey or date syrup made from dates that used to grow here in the land. Along the Jordan River, we have lots of greenhouses. We actually grow there a whole lot of fresh herbs and especially flowers. And Israel is very big in exporting flowers to Europe. We even export tulips to Holland around Christmas time. Um, on the Mediterranean Sea, because we have this Mediterranean climate, we can grow everything that requires lots of water. Citrus, for example, Israel was known for oranges and citrus. We grow cotton there. Israeli cotton has very, very good reputation. Those are products that require lots of water. Um, but the biggest surprise is that most and our best agricultural products actually come from the desert, from the 60% of Israel, which is a desert. If you start from the south Negev, you go down south to Eilat, along the way you will see lots and lots and lots of greenhouses, and those greenhouses grow the best agricultural products that we can offer. The best watermelons come from here, from the Arava Desert. We grow cucumbers, we grow cherry tomatoes. Cherry tomatoes were invented in Israel. Um, we grow zucchini. Um, in fact, we don't have the kind of agriculture that there is around the world. We don't have lots of space. So we don't see, we don't grow big fields of potatoes, big fields of soybeans or corn. Our agriculture is very high-tech agriculture, very small, mainly in greenhouses. Type of agriculture that allows you to use a small space and yet make a whole lot of money. One of the uh, better products or more interesting products that we export from Hatseva here in the desert is watermelon to the Japanese market because watermelon from Hatseva is very juicy, very sweet, very red. Japanese love it. Problem was that it was very hard to export those watermelons because of their shape and pack them in a container. And so here in Hatseva, they invented the square watermelon for the Japanese market. You probably say, yeah, sure, that's one of the stories that tour guides make. But believe me, it's a true story, and you can actually see the square watermelons on the screen. Um, you put little wooden boxes around the square watermelons. They grow kind of square into the box, and then it's easier to pack them and export them, and of course, make more money on that kind of watermelon. So if you look at all the agricultural products that the land has to offer, you'll find that pretty much anything you know about uh, in the world can grow here. Uh, but we don't only export agricultural products, we also export a whole lot to do with irrigation. Israel is very big on irrigation system. Uh, the necessity for irrigation system was because in biblical days, people literally lived wherever they had water. So if they lived in the north where there was water, they did not live so much in the desert because there was no water. Israel, after the establishment in 1948, and especially in the 50s, we learned how to export water or bring water from areas that have water into areas that don't have water. We learned how to have agriculture with less water or even with salt water. And so we were able to pretty much have agriculture everywhere we go. Funny or interesting is that everybody who traveled in this land 150 years ago called it a desert. When Mark Twain was here, he was very disappointed. He said, all you could see when you travel is a desert, no civilization, maybe a few skinny dogs, few Arabs. And now 
you're in one of the most advanced countries in the Middle East, definitely, and, and one of the most advanced countries in the whole Western world. So we export irrigation systems. Um, everybody uses drip irrigation. I'm sure at home you use drip irrigation to water your gardens. This is a system that was developed in Israel. They used to spray and then realize the water evaporates before it hits the ground. So they came with the idea of having a pipe with little holes in it that will bring the water into the roots of the plant. And then if you combine liquid fertilizers and a computer on top of all that, you have a fully automatic irrigation system. Uh, we sell that irrigation system all over the world. Now they have even a newer generation where you install sensors in the soil and the sensors analyzes what kind of minerals the soil needs for whatever product you're gonna grow. And so you can grow pretty much whatever you want wherever you want to grow it. And so keep in mind that we are a small country, but we have a lot of agriculture, agricultural products, machinery, agricultural systems, but we don't only end up in agriculture. Israel is also very high on high tech and very big on Israeli products that we sell all over the world. In the next episode, we're gonna talk about Israel as a startup nation.